Now, Water Sanitation Minister Senzo Mkunu and the Mayor of the Etiquini Municipality, Mkolisi Kaunda, are hosting a water in Bizo in efforts to address the water supply challenges being experienced in some parts of the Etiquini Municipality. So, to join us and uh, joining us rather to discuss further is water expert Mike Muller to weigh in on this. Mike, good afternoon and thank you for your time with us here on the SABC at the Sawa. Good afternoon to you and to your viewers. All right, Mike, so in lieu of the Mbizo that is going to, that is um, currently transpiring, I wonder if you could just give us your fair assessment of what is unfolding, the situation unfolding. Um, we're looking at effective stakeholder management at this point, how to improve service delivery and also expectations at large. And I wonder, you know, by looking at who the various stakeholders are, what, what are you observing on that front how does the um, Umgeni water, um, the role of Umgeni water also come into, into play in the situation? Yeah, it's a complicated business, isn't it? And it's, uh, it's, it serves all the people from Gauteng, right, that they leave their water problems behind in Gauteng and now they go down to Tequini and they find that it's exactly the same issue. Let me just be clear, this, there's a lot of water issues in Tequini and the surrounding areas. The first we know about, you know, they had a big flood caused by all sorts of reasons, did all sorts of damage and interrupted water supplies to quite a few communities. That emergency was certainly a very high priority for the people of the city and for the national government because you had whole large communities without water. But rather like the situation up here in Gauteng, you've got a, a situation where the population of Etiquini and the surrounding areas is growing very fast. They need more water. And for the past 10 years, there's been discussions about how to get the more water. And there's a project on the table waiting to be approved. And then very critically, who's going to pay how much? And I think that's where the debates and discussions have been, because you've got a Tequini municipality who takes some of the water, quite a lot of it, and has to pay back quite a lot of it. You've got some of the other municipalities who are going to benefit as well. They all get supplied, rather like your last story, from a water board, in this case, the Umgeni Utkela water board. And then you have national government trying to coordinate all of this and also planning a very, very big dam on the Umkumazi River. And all of this needs to be coordinated and agreed before the long-term water security of the region is assured. And I think what Minister Mkunu is doing down there today is trying to get all the parties around the table, finally, after 10 years, to agree on how to go forward. We certainly hope so. And in the meantime, can they please fix the emergency uh, repairs that are necessary? Because there are still the areas without water in, in that region. Um, Mike, are there, speaking on water security, are there concerns at this point about water and sanitation mismanagement in Etiquini um, in becoming a, a humanitarian crisis as we speak, given, given what's unfolding? You know, I, I think it's, we, we, we've had a humanitarian crisis after the big storm, which washed away a lot of the water supply pipelines and damaged the water treatment plants and also damaged sewage works and caused pollution of the rivers and the beaches. So I think the humanitarian crisis is something that's happened, is being dealt with. I know uh, from what we hear that not everything is fixed yet, but at least it's on the way to being fixed. But, you know, the danger with these kind of events is they distract us from the fact that there's going to be a couple of million more people by the, you know, by 2030 who are also going to be wanting water. And that new water has got to come from somewhere and someone is going to have to pay for it. So the Umkumazi Dam project, and it's a very big dam and a large pipeline and tunnels and new treatment works, a very large project, not very much smaller than the Lesotho Highlands, which is supplying Gauteng. That has all got to be organized and agreed to by all the local politicians. And I have to say that uh, KZN isn't famous for having local politicians who are able to work together with different institutions, reach an agreement and start the work. Because I know for a fact that this particular project has been held up now for three years because of disagreements between different municipalities about who should pay how much, what the water tariffs would be, what the national treasury would contribute. So uh, we, we have to hope that out of this imbizu that the minister is having 
he'll be able to convince people, really, it is time to move if you don't want to hit the kind of crisis that affected uh, Kabacha, that affected Cape Town. This is your chance. Take the decision. Let's move forward and stop talking and start working. Which obviously impacts what's unfolding as we age closer to elections. And you've um, raised a pertinent point because I actually wanted to look at the issue of leadership in local government and, you know, just addressing or interacting effectively with um, stakeholder management the political will or lack thereof to resolve this and whether it is time for national government to step in maybe also have the area be declared a state of disaster what are you observing on that front or how would you weigh in on those sentiments you know i think that one of the things that is happening and i think the minister you know who comes from kzn and knows the local politics well is being sort of guided by by what his experience there is because the the legislation allows for uh, the water supply to be undertaken by a provider, which could be a municipality. If the municipality does, doesn't does work well, it could be a water board, or it could even be a private supplier if none of the public suppliers are able to do the work. Then the local government still has a very serious responsibility. It has to oversee and monitor and hold accountable those providers. And I think what's happening increasingly in the country because of the confusion that we see in municipalities is that the actual doing the work, you know, um, building the projects, running the water treatment stations, fixing the leaks, that increasingly is going to have to be done by specialized institutions. They could be water boards. They could be good municipalities that do the job properly, or we could even bring in private contractors. The law allows that, but it has to be agreed with the communities concerned. And you know, one of the things that convinces communities that they need to take action is when the water starts getting interrupted and the supply, which used to be reliable and safe, is no longer safe and no longer reliable. And we're seeing that happening in more and more places, including in areas around the Tequini. Well, this obviously um, speaks to the impact and the ripple effects across the value chain. And given the issue of sewage and beaches, water, um, uh, just the impact of the water quality as well. Um, I mean, this must have an impact on the tourism and the ecology at large, particularly in this festive season. How would you weigh in on that? It's also the cost to the city per annum, the losses that they're also incurring on that front. But most importantly, also the impact on the most poor and vulnerable. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Tequini can ask Cape Town, which tried to save money by delaying, you know, the expansion of their water supply system. And they calculated that to save a couple of hundred million in, in, in uh, delaying the project, it cost them a couple of billion a year in lost revenue through tourism and other business. So really, a reliable water supply, especially for a big city, a big metro like uh, Tequini, is vital to keep the economy running. And if you don't keep the economy running, of course, the, the people who suffer most are the poorest people. Rich people always find some way of dealing with things. They try to drill boreholes, they put in storage tanks, but it's in the poorer communities that if the public service begins to fail, that the people feel it first and feel it hardest. And I, I, I think this is why politically, with 2024 just around the corner, an election sometime in the course of 2024, it's really quite vital that uh, the water supply, particularly the water supply gets fixed, but also those communities which are really affected by the sanitation system breakdown and damage that was caused by the storm. I think, you know, if you've got sewage running down your street, you also want to see that cleaned up. So there's a big job to be done. And of course, the difficulty is if the municipalities are not properly organized, if there's a lot of infighting, if there's a lot of change of leadership, they are not going to do the job properly. And then the, we have to ask the question, how else can we do the job? Who else can do the job? And that's where the water boards, certainly up in Gauteng, have been very helpful. And I think we'll probably see this happening in KwaZulu-Natal as well, unless the municipalities magically get themselves into order again. 
Well, um, there are more questions than answers at this point, and perhaps using this as a microcosm, we're obviously looking at South Africa's water um, crisis at large. Um, but thank you. Let's leave that conversation there for now. And um, thank you again to Mike Camilla for joining us, their water expert wing. And, you know, it's just on the back of the Water and Sanitation Minister, Senzom Kunu, and the Mayor of Etoquini, Kolisi Kaunda, hosting a Water and Biso. They're just looking at some of the ways and efforts to address the water challenges, the water supply ch crisis that's also been experienced in some parts of the Etoquini municipality. Mike Muller weighing in on that discussion.